Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul, and I truly appreciate you joining me today. Today we've got a really cool restoration up online here. We've got a Hot Wheels NASCAR Stalker. Now this car was released in 1983, and I remember watching this real car race when I was younger. It was driven by Darrell Waltrip, and man, it was a great car back when Buicks ruled the roost at NASCAR. So we're going to have a great time restoring this car. Sit back, grab your favorite adult beverage, or if you don't drink, have a Coke or a coffee or a glass of water, and join in on today's restoration. Let's get started with today's build. It's time to start the autopsy. <laughs> I've already drilled out the post, so let's see what we got here. Here's the body, and it's pretty beat up and pretty dinged up, but I think I'm going to want to go in and redo all the decals. So I'm going to start from scratch and make sure the things line up right and look a lot better than they do now. Here's the base. It's in fairly good shape, but the wheels definitely need to be replaced. So I'll find a donor car for those. A little fire extinguisher there, that's pretty cool. It might be a little difficult finding the gold wheels, but I think we can. We'll search on eBay or something and see what we can find. Here's the interior. That's pretty cool. It's actually got a little cutout for the fire extinguisher. And here's the windshield. A little bit of polish on that and they'll straighten it right up. Let's continue. Someone is being exhumed. <laughs> I've stripped all the paint off, got it cleaned up, and I went back in and covered it with Tamiya Surface Primer. I also went in and hit it with a nice clear coat of my Diecast Graveyard 2K Clear. So let's put the decals on. Like I said, I made these decals myself, and I printed them up with my iColor 560 printer. Although it's not necessary to do a white underprint on these decals because the car it's going on is white, I still did the white underprint and these actually turned out really good. I was very, very pleased. Let's smooth that out with a Q-tip, make sure they line up properly. Once you get them positioned, do your best to squeegee out all the excess fluid underneath and smooth it out with that Q-tip. These actually fit very, very nice. When I remade these decals, I also went, I went in and I replaced all of the logos, like the Goodyear logo and the STP logo and the Champion logo, etc. I wanted to make sure that these things looked really, really clear when I did this. And I truly believe I accomplished that. That looks really, really sharp. Let's do the top now. I don't keep dropping the things here. And make sure you line them up properly. It's easier to work with them when they're wet. <laughs> don't forget to hit that like button and mash that subscribe button if you're getting anything out of these videos. This is how I continue to produce content for you on a regular basis so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and again mash that like button that that really helps me out 
Let's put the decal on the hood. Make sure it's centered up properly. That's looking awesome. Now this car did not have a decal that went on the trunk. I almost made one just because, but it uh, I wanted it to be a restoration and not a resto mod. Now we have to put the decal on the driver's side of the car. If you have any questions about making decals, I am getting ready to release a new video on how to design your own decals. Now it also depends on what kind of printing machine you have, be it inkjet or be it laser jet, be it something expensive or something a little bit on the less expensive side. But uh, I'll be able to answer all your questions. And of course, if you have any questions, just please leave them in the comments. I do read every single comment that you guys put on there. I do my best to get back to you if you, if you have questions. Just uh, make sure you leave that, those questions so I can get to answer them for you. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Now here I'm using the tweezers to move the decals around. You've got to be super careful here because with a sharp object like that, you're liable to poke a hole in the decals and actually ruin them. So please be careful. Now also, if you're ordering decals from anyone else, if you get them from me or if you get them from uh, Vince at Second Chance Redlines or anybody else, make sure you order at least more than one set. Because if you make a mistake and you wrinkle the decal or you uh, rip it apart or whatever, you'll have that backup set. And the best part about it is, is if you don't ruin the first set or have a problem with it, you've got a second set in case you decide to do something a little bit later on. So it's a win-win situation. Man, those decals look sharp. I'm very pleased with how they turned out. cut that one just a little bit too close on the bottom so it was messing up with the red stripe on the bottom and I keep fidgeting with it too That's looking pretty cool. Oh, I messed that up. I replaced it with a new one. And here's all the pieces. Got the body all done. Got the clear coat done with my Diecast Graveyard 2K Clear. It absolutely looks beautiful. And you should check out the 2K Clear at DiecastGraveyard.com. It's a great product and it will make your car look absolutely like glass. Here's the base with the new wheels. That looks great. They roll good. Like I said, I held them in with super glue. A fire extinguisher there. I should have painted that up, but that's really cool. Here's the interior. Clean that up. And here's the windshield. Let's go ahead and put everything together and give my creation life. And here's what we started with. This Hot Wheels NASCAR Stalker. It's a great car, but it's definitely seen better days. The tampos on the side are worn out, etc. So we had to go back in and redesign some decals. We also did a wheel swap and put some brand new fresh wheels on there from a donor car that I got off of eBay. But we took the car apart, we cleaned it up, we repainted it, put a nice clear coat on there, Put the decals on and then put another level of clear coat on there. That gives your, your surface a real nice smooth finish and you don't have any silvering on there 
with decals that you put on a rough surface, like if you put it on flat paint, etc. If you put that clear coat down, it'll definitely prevent the silvering. But we got everything together, and we put it back together, and man, I'll tell you, this thing turned out absolutely beautiful. What a great looking car. And here's how it turned out. Man, like I said, this thing turned out absolutely beautiful. And like I always say to you folks, you can do this too. Watch the videos that I put out to show you how to do certain things to these cars. I've got videos on how to take your car apart, how to prep it for paint, how to pick an airbrush, how to pick a compressor, etc., etc. Plus, I got friends out there that have got all kinds of cool videos also, like Andrew from Maple Leaf Customs, Tom from Spork Syndicate, Skip from Crossroad Diecast Speed Shop, and many, many others. Just uh, have a great time, enjoy your hobby, start off slow, and then work your way up to these big cars here, and you'll have a great time, I promise you. And if you have any questions, you can always ask one of us or ask the community for help. That's for sure. Just follow and subscribe and hit that like button. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I always have fun making these videos for you. And I've got a lot more coming up. I've got some on how to design decals. We've got the Four Horsemen build due at the end of the month. Check out the Four Horsemen schedule. Thank you so much and cheers.